we know that the essential ingredient that enables motivation to facilitate deep student learning is engagement. And as educators, we are very aware of how important it is for our learners to be engaged. Engagement has been defined as the extent to which students are connected to what they are learning, how they are learning it, and who they are learning from. Engagement can be behavioural, concerned with attention, effort, persistence and participation. It can be cognitive, concerned with values and goals, or emotional, concerned with belonging to a group or interpersonal relationships. Engagement can be perceived as the hook that captures students' attention so that the students feel that the experience has value and relevance to their learning and their personal goals and needs. It's important to note that as engagement draws on behavioural, social, emotional and cognitive dimensions, engagement in one dimension relates to the level of engagement in another. It's also important to note that one can be motivated but not necessarily engaged in a learning episode. Andrew Martin's Motivation and Engagement Wheel graphically represents the distinction between 11 cognitive and behavioural factors represented as adaptive motivation, adaptive engagement, maladaptive motivation and maladaptive engagement. Yeah, so how do we... Have I got a circle? Yeah. From one side to the other passing through the centre point is the yeah. diameter. Yeah. Okay. So that's 10.7. You multiply that by pi, which is? 3.14. And that will give you the circumference. Yes. Okay, so our thing, so we're doing it on the measurement of the compass. And so we've worked out that one of these equals a centimetre. Okay. And, and rule is not good enough? <laughs> or mathematical is good enough? That's not real. Yeah. We had to measure. So, so yeah. we traced okay. this. And like, mm -hmm. so two of these equals 36 centimetres. Okay. Yeah. Um, so that, makes so your that, that like means five. your diameter of your circle. Because if you have done two, the line down there is the diameter. The diameter multiplied by pi will tell you the Sorry, exact that measurement. The That's what I had to check. I didn't know if that was the number I was tying by pi. Yes, it is. Okay. And then that will give you the dimensions that you need. So, 12 centimetres. Long. 12 centimetres long. And how wide? Uh, another 12 centimetres. Okay. Okay, so 12 by 12. Okay. Why would it like that? Oh, that's good. Try to make it a bit. No, you can't do it like that. Did you see students demonstrating real focus and effort? The students were intellectually involved in their learning and their drive for learning is linked to their personal goals. There seems to be a real connection to teachers and peers, a sense of belonging that creates interest and curiosity in their learning. But there is another essential ingredient, emotions. Learning is both cognitive and emotional. Emotions drive our interests, motivation and engagement. Imordino, Yang and Damasio define emotions as the perception of emotionally relevant triggers, either real or imagined, that trigger a physiological response, leading to a behavioural and psychological outcome. Importantly, they tell us that the aspects of cognition that are recruited most heavily in education, including learning, attention, memory, decision-making, motivation and social functioning, are both profoundly affected by emotions and in fact subsumed within the process of emotion. Emotions impact a range of cognitive capacities, including attention, memory, problem-solving, decision-making, information processing and engagement. They affect interest, motivation and social interactions. 
And so, emotions and deep engagement in learning are highly intertwined. For example, when the emotional experience associated with the level of engagement to learning is positive, the outcome is positive. But when the emotional experience associated with the level of engagement is negative, the outcome is negative. As such, when a learner is not emotionally engaged with the learning experience, learning is negatively impacted. Emotional disengagement or disaffection with the learning context often presents as withdrawal from the learning experience based on anxiety, boredom, frustration or apathy. If the learner finds the content boring, irrelevant, distressing, too difficult or too easy, they may become cognitively disengaged, as is evidenced through inattention, daydreaming, disruptive behaviour and absenteeism. If they are cognitively disengaged, they are most likely to be behaviourally disengaged, manifesting in the physical withdrawal of effort and participation. A key emotional driver for deciding to engage is interest. Let's hear from the teacher in our emotionally engaged classroom about why students are engaged in this situation. Well, I think for deep learning, there has to be interest before they're going to actually learn. If you're not interested in something, you're not going to transfer that into a long-term knowledge and to actually be able to regather that information from your long-term memory. If it's boring, you'll do what you have to do and by the time you've walked out of the door, it's gone. So I think it needs to be interesting, you need to approach it in lots of different ways and make sure that it stays interesting for them to keep learning and to actually want to ask questions and find something else out about it. Because if they don't ask questions then you know that they're probably not learning anything new because they might already know it so it's, it might actually be boring to them or if they're not asking questions that are really relevant, you know that they're off task and not really taking on that, that learning. So interest, I think, is the key. So I think they, anything hands-on kids really like. They like to be able to move around, they like to be able to work collaboratively because they can not feel as though if they can't do it, they've got no one to ask or they've got to ask me. So they really enjoy that sort of thing which helps keep them on task. Um, you can tell if they're on task because of the noise level as well. It doesn't get really loud. It, it, there is noise, but you can tell that they're really focused on each other, they're not listening to other conversations, so the noise level doesn't continue to, to head up. They're kind of laughing with each other, they're looking at each other, and they're sitting upward, right? They're not kind of slouching down on their desks, because once they do that, you go, oh, hang on, something's not right there. And they're usually laughing with each other, because what I found, especially with this class, is that the kids are really friendly with each other. They, it doesn't matter who you sit next to, they will have a chat and it can be a boy with a girl, it really doesn't matter, they're, they're really accepting of whom you are and will just do whatever you ask them to do when they're doing that. Uh, when the kids are starting to become disengaged, if it's one or two I'll redirect them and say come on and I'll go over and make sure that they, they know what they're doing and are, aren't off task because they're not sure. Sometimes depending on the time of day we have a brain break so I give them, get them to have a snack, which means that not only are they getting some food, they're also moving. So they're getting out of their chair, they're going out to their school bag to get something to eat. Um, the other thing, if we've been working on a task for a while, whether it's finished or not, and they're all starting to get a bit fidgety, we'll go out for a game. We'll go out for 10, 15 minutes onto the oval, do something that will re-energise and, and give the brains a break so that they can come back in and go, OK, I'm ready again. I think to develop positive relationships with the kids, you really do need to get to know them. You need to be fair and just, but you can't be their friend. You have to make sure that there is that, not, not a barrier, there's a boundary that they know that they don't ask questions that are really personal, they um, know that you are the teacher and they respect you for your position, but that you ha are, are open to anything. If they want to come and talk to you about anything, you're there for them. Where there is increased value and relevance for the learner, there is increased interest, which moves the learning experience into the optimal performance zone for the individual, leading to deep engagement. When enjoyment and interest are combined, the overall effect is one of fun or pleasure, and this is an essential component of creative problem solving and deep engagement. The experience of positive emotions and an increased sense of fun 
has been shown to improve the capacity for creative and flexible thinking, increases persistence, supports the development of higher goals and aspirations, and opens our minds to a wider range of ideas, thoughts and actions. Interest is essential to initiate and direct attention and exploration, and is fundamental to motivation. An interest is what predicts a learner's decision to remain engaged in the task or activity. The experience of the positive effect associated with fun and pleasure enhances an individual's capacity to broaden their perspective, explore possibilities and take creative risks. All are essential for deep learning.